Oh what a night everyone was up for it on what ended up being the latest entry into Tottenham's list of magical European nights under the lights. This is Tottenham Hotspur so of course there had to be drama and a nervy first half that required a couple of big saves from Hugo Lloris to avert disaster. In the second half, those Spurs were a different animal and Dortmund couldn't live with them at times. There was also the crowd. In the end 71,214 made their way to Wembley, and when their team needed them the most they turned up in full voice. Often this season Wembley has been flat, full of frustration, that it's still the club's home, rather than the new stadium that was promised. However, with the Dortmund fans already in their seats an hour before kickoff and in full voice, with flags and banners flying, the home faithful stepped up their game and rose to the challenge. At one point late the second half, after Spurs had scored their third goal, an ear-splitting rendition of oh, when the Spurs go marching in reverberated around Wembley, the loudest sound the national stadium has heard during the club's tenancy. As Mauricio Pochettino said, it's only halftime in the tie, but the goals from Sun Hyung Min, Jan Verdemann and Fernando Llorente have put them in a great position to progress to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Pochettino explained what he had done at halftime to help turn the game in Spurs' favor. The first half was very difficult, first of all, because we never felt the confidence to play. We took some rash decisions. It's like we weren't comfortable. We didn't feel what we planned to play," he said. But after fixing some problems, showing them some clips at halftime, and talking a little about different positions, offensive and defensive and trying to help the team to perform better. Also we were a bit lucky because it was a massive confidence boost when Sonny scored and made the team play much better. We deserved the victory in the end. It was a massive victory and the players deserve all the credit. They were fantastic. To play after Sunday with one day less recovery we need to praise them. They've won the possibility to have a few days off. They've earned some rest after shining in a tie that can rightfully take its place in the pages of the club's European history books. Sun score, Spurs win Pochettino was in a playful mood when it was pointed out that whenever Sun scores, Spurs win this season. It's been that way in each of the 13 games he's netted in, including the latest European evening at Wembley. OK, next time when Sun scores I'll go to the dressing room and shower and wait for the end of the game," he responded with a grin. He added more seriously, it's good, it's nice to hear that. Sonny was fantastic again, he's doing fantastically. He's a player who provides the team with a lot of very good things. His smile, he translates good energy and his performance in every single game is improving and improving. We're so happy. It's so obvious how he is. Sun has stepped up when called upon. He's returned from his Asian Cup disappointment determined to fill the void left by the injured Harry Kane and Del Alley, and he's done it. In fact he's reveled in it. He's scored in every match since his return, extending his streak to 11 goals in his last 11 games. But Russia Dortmund in particular must be sick of the sight of him. His record against them is 9 goals in 11 games, stretching back to his days in the Bundesliga. Sun will travel to the Signal Iduna Park next month looking to wreak more havoc on the German outfit.
and he'll likely have Kane and Ali alongside him again. The duo owe a lot to the South Korean star. Without him they would likely be returning to a side spluttering towards the end of a season with only a top four race to play for. Instead Son has helped keep Spurs in the title race and they're halfway to booking their place in the Champions League quarterfinals. The best players step up to the plate when their teammates need them the most and Son has done that yet again. The scary thing for opposition defenses is that Pochettino reckons he's only going to keep get better. Super Jan what do you do when your most consistent center back over the past three years is also your best left back? That's the question that probably never needs answering because Jan Verdingen has no wish to play on the left in any long-term capacity. Although he'll often say, that he'll play anywhere for the team, particularly for Pochettino, Verdun and made his feelings very clear on the left-back slot during Andre Villas Boas' tenure at the club. Spurs can't afford to lose him from the middle anyway, particularly with Toby Alderweireld's £25 million release clause likely to be triggered by some club this summer. However at left back, Verdingen does offer something Danny Rose and Ben Davies can't an end product. Rose is a strong, battling left back, but his final ball rarely matches the positions he gets into. Davies the first half of last season a sight is more of a solid defender than a creator. Verdingen brings the best of both worlds, allied with ability on the ball which would make many attacking midfielders green with envy. His cross for Sun early in the second half was absolutely perfect, skimming the head of Dan Axel's Agadu and landing on the South Korean attacker's foot. Then the Belgian showed he can finish just as well, running in at the back post to volley home on the stretch from Serge Aurier's ball from the right. To top it off he walked away with a clean sheet after playing his part in the defensive side of things. Verdingen turns 32 soon and he laughed at claims that his days might be numbered at the top level. I don't feel that old yet. I try to enjoy every moment of it. Champions League games are unbelievable to play in the Premier League. I realize every week I want to keep going as long as I can, he said. I feel the best I have ever felt physically. I feel in great condition. I am not thinking about the end yet. Verdunant has got years left in him at the top and Spurs need to make sure that he's spending them in Tottenham. Foyth's bravery There were two moments in the first half that summed up where Juan Foyth is right now. In both instances he was put into tough spots by passes by Davinson Sanchez. In the first situation, under pressure from two Dortmund players he span around Moussa Dembele style in between and drove away playing a pinpoint ball in between two other players to Harry Winks. The crowd roared their approval at the silky skills of the young defender who told football. London last week that he had been an attacking midfielder in Estudiantes Academy until the age of 16. A couple of minutes later at Wembley, Foyd tried a similar move and was caught out, gifting an opportunity to Christian Pulisic, who he lunged out and almost caught for a penalty. Thankfully for the 20-year-old Argentine, he didn't and Loris was on hand to deny the American and bail his young teammate out. What impressed the most about Foyt from then on was that he did not let that affect him. He kept playing his game, mopping up at the back 
having Pulisic in his pocket for the second half, driving forward and linking up with Aurier in the midfield. Toby Alderweireld and Sanchez both seemed to trust his use of the ball as they kept passing the ball his way when it was played among the back three. Lucas Moura's signing had left Pochettino with the painful decision a year ago to cut Foyt from the European squad due to the club's excessive foreign player numbers. Almost a year later, and not only was Foyt put back into the squad after Dembele's departure to China, but he was starting the very next match. I asked Pochettino if the young defender's performance had justified that decision. After 3-0 it's easy to say yes, but it's the same as Kyle Walker-Peters playing in a decisive game in Barcelona," said the Spurs manager. The most important thing is when we feel something, when we believe the player deserves to play, it's not important the name, the experience is not important. It's not important if they're a 20 or 30 year old. In our job the most important thing is to be fair in your decision. To feel or have some idea, knowledge about how they can behave. He added, I'm so happy for Juan, he was fantastic today. Of course he still needs to improve and learn. He's so brave, braver than you expect, braver than the people expect. The first action was unbelievable, the people were pushing him, and then he made a few mistakes because he wanted to play. But I prefer players who make mistakes trying to play. I was a completely different type of center back, not with his quality. I love the players taking risks who are brave like he is. Watching Foyf and Sanchez playing alongside each other, albeit in a back three perhaps gave Tottenham fans a glimpse of the future. The 21- and 22-year-old could be the club's long-term central defensive partnership and Pochettino has high hopes for both. Poch versus opinions now is the time for Pochettino and his players to enjoy some well-earned rest. They've played a ridiculous amount of matches since the last international break, and many players have played the bulk of them, while Jesus Perez and the sports science team juggle how many minutes each can play. There will always be fans and media who disagree with the team selections, who should play and who shouldn't, and when a player should just play through an injury, or when they can put off a rest, who deserves a chance and who doesn't. Pochettino took aim at those kind of opinions after the win against Dortmund with one of his now customary monolds meant to put the footballing world to rights. Football is a sport where all people can give opinions and everyone is right, but we need to assess and take decisions, that's my job. Not only prepare the strategy, but select the 11. I cannot select 22 players to play in each game," he said. Everyone can have their opinion, but in the end, only we know and can measure the player's level and momentum, form and what we want to do in every single game. Plus our feelings, our intuition and our knowledge, only the coaching staff in any club have all the information to take the best decisions. Opinion is different. In football you need all the information on what goes on at the training ground and when we assess the players and afterwards take every single decision to try to win. Every single manager wants to win, but I accept all opinions, I don't agree or take in the wrong way. Today it was 3-0 and maybe everyone says oh fantastic decision or maybe if it's a different result and I'm the worst coach in the world. The balance is the most important thing. 
If you win you're not a genius, if you lose it's not a disaster. You just need to take the right decision the next time, because football is about winning. Football fandom is plagued by opinion. It's what makes it so interesting the debate, but also what drives the hysteria. Social media is a reactionary world where one player is the worst one week and the best the next, unless there's an agenda to be followed. The crowd at matches are no different. There are always those who appear to hate certain players and those who just hate everyone. There is one old boy who sits to the left of the press area at Wembley and spends the entire 90 minutes berating every player every single week. You're utter garbage, a waste of space, get him off Pochettino, is a familiar refrain, said with every increasing anger. When Spurs score the fan looks lost particularly when it's that player, and at the final whistle at Wembley on Wednesday night he just looked downright confused. Football opinion will hopefully always be around this reporter's job, and many others depends on it. Pochettino's point is that it's great to have these opinions, but if you don't know what's actually going on behind the scenes then it's unlikely to be one based in fact. The Spurs boss is off now to escape it all, leaving the UK for a few days. He wouldn't reveal where he's going to, but the odds are that it'll be one of his regular trips back to his beloved Barcelona. He's earned the break, and when he returns, March 23 brings a trip to take on Sean Ditch's men. Barcelona to Burnley the life of a Premier League manager. Keep up to date with the latest Tottenham Hotspur news, features and exclusives from football. London via our free WhatsApp service. Text news to 07776197989 and then add the number to your phone contacts book as spurs.london, case sensitive, with spaces, to receive daily updates and breaking news from Alasdair Gold and the team on Spurs. Your phone number won't be shared with any other members of the group. Click here for more information on the service.